Well, hello there. I'm Heather Ordover. I'm the host of the annotated audiobook podcast, Craft Lit. And I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who listened to and wrote back to me about the plagiarism video response that I did to H. Bomber Guy's plagiarism video. Plagiarism video about the plagiarism video. Uh, I was completely flattened by the responses that we got. And not, not just flattened by the responses, but flattened by the kindness and the care and the thought behind the responses. My brother-in-law, who is a fabulous director-producer, he texted me and he said, wow, I think you found all of the good people on YouTube in your comments. And I gotta say, it's, it's been like that with Craftlet too for the last 18 years. There's something about the topics that we cover and the books that we listen to and the fact that most Craftlet listeners are makers of some sort that it just seems to bring out the best in people. And I am so happy to have found a larger community of people who are like-minded as well. And if you don't listen to the podcast, it doesn't matter. Just thank you. And I did want to let you know, I mentioned at the end of the plagiarism video that I have long COVID and that is true and that sucks. And I wanted to not raise expectations based on some of the comments that I saw shortly after the plagiarism video went out. When I recorded that video, I was having a good week. And by good, I mean, I could spend up to two whole hours on a computer or a phone screen before the headaches kicked in. I have not had such great weeks since then, which is kind of horrible, but it's one of the reasons why I haven't been able to write back to some of you in real time or even close to real time. And I wanted to apologize for that because I have seen the comments rolling in. I just didn't have enough brain left to respond to all of them. So if you didn't get a response right away, you will. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but you will. The other thing I wanted to let you know about is that we just finished the book, The Three Musketeers on Craftlet. Craftlet, by the way, has an app that you can listen to the show on. We're on iTunes, we're everywhere that has a RSS feed for a podcast. We have patreon.com slash craftlit. We're on Libsyn, uh, craftlit.libsyn.com. And that feed, by the way, never goes down. Even if iTunes screws up, Libsyn, Libsyn never does. So thank you, Libsyn. So again, we just finished The Three Musketeers, which means I am in a research phase for our next book. I have many books. I have many, many books. This is the thinnest of them about Jane Austen. And I'm going to be plowing through these again uh, more slowly than I normally would because book reading is not all that different from screen reading for my brain right now. And these books are only available on paper, not audio. So I'm kind of stuck having to actually physically read them, which is tricky. But I am hoping that by the end of March, we will have the new show going. That will be our series for Jane Austen's Emma. And Emma is a tricky one because just like what happened when I did Wuthering Heights years ago, I've had some comments from people that came in very strong on both sides. It's either, oh my God, I love that book. I can't wait to do this on Craftlet with you. Or, are you serious? Emma, that book is so annoying. And I think part of the problem is that Emma has been annoying in several films, film-based versions of the story. Although the most recent one with Anya Taylor-Joy, I thought, mm brilliant. But be that as it may, the book is the book and Jane Austen is spectacular. In fact, if you are a fan of Jane Austen, I do have to say this book that I just showed you with the Craftlet bookmark from our Craftlet book exchange last Christmas. Thank you, Tracy, for arranging it. And thank you, Anne, for the bookmark. Uh, this book by John Mullen, What Matters in Jane Austen, 20 Crucial Puzzles Solved. It's really interesting, and I didn't know this book existed before when we did Northanger Abbey a couple of years ago, but already in the introduction, he has mentioned several of the things that we talked about during that book. Like, oh, and I, I even mentioned this on one of our YouTube shorts. If you pay attention in Jane Austen, she gives you important hints about people's character by their actions. Like the bad guy, John Thorpe in Northanger Abbey. He brags about how fast he's going to be able to get somewhere in his carriage, and it's it's just flat out impossible. It's like 20 miles away. There's no way you could get there in two hours unless he is beating the bejujus out of his horse. 
bad guy. We're supposed to know things like that. And that's what Craftlet is for. I do this research, I find out information like that, and then I can share it with you before we listen to that chapter. However, since it is going to take me a while to get all of this research ready, because I really do feel like Emma was different in the Jane Austen pantheon. If we look at the contemporary review by Sir Walter Scott, it was really the first time that people stood up and took notice of what Jane Austen was doing as a skill set. Like, whoa, these are not just little domestic love stories. These are big, complex, heavily characterized and precisely narrated books that are well worth our time in taking a look at. So Emma is coming because we have our Patreon group and our premium listeners on the Craftlet app, though. We are going to put out a short premium audio series during my time off while I'm prepping for Emma. So in that series, there will be no craftlittiness. It will be just the notes and the book audio and the book will be Jane Austen's Lady Susan. Now, some of you may remember Lady Susan from way back in the day. And by way back in the day, I mean a really long time ago. Back, back in the early days of podcasting, when Brenda Dane was rocking it with Cast On and Sage Turtle was being awesome on Quirky Nomads and I was freshly on the boat with Craftlet, Sage Turtle produced Lady Susan for LibriVox.org, which means all of that book audio is free and all of that audio is read by actual people who actually know how to read well, particularly Brenda Dane, who is the main voice throughout this book. So Lady Susan is a short epistolary novel. It's all letters written back and forth between characters. And it's early Jane Austen, so it's not as full-bodied as her works are later. But that doesn't mean that there isn't some really juicy good stuff in there. They tried to make a movie of it called Love and Friendship, where they fleshed out some of it. And it was fine. It was fine. The book. The book is fun. The book's a lot of fun. So... That's how we are going to be filling our time during my research break. I'm also going to do my best to do things like this as often as I can. Uh, shorts, book reviews, things that I want to share with you. We are working on some more essays. There are always topics for video essays. So those will be coming. We also want to invite you to send us your book commercials. Any book that you've been reading that you think other people who listen to things like Emma and... Lady Susan and the Three Musketeers would be interested in. Could be modern, could be classic, doesn't matter. Uh, send us a little book commercial. And at the end of each month, we're going to start posting the book commercials as a compilation because it's hard to find good books sometimes. There's so much noise out there. It's kind of nice to have a source you can go to that you can trust. And Craftlet people have been doing that for a long time. So those will be coming, but obviously that requires a lot more screen time for prep. I am trying to learn how to dictate into a computer, and that's, that's been a stretch. So I don't know how much faster I'm going to be able to go with these things, but I did want you to know that I am paying attention. And I appreciate the fact that you're paying attention. It's just, it's a huge, huge thank you for your views, for your subscriptions, for your thumbs ups and in particular for your very, very insightful and thoughtful comments. We've had some really interesting conversations in the comment threads. Some of them keep coming up, like, oh, like the one that I needed to apologize for. I misspoke in the plagiarism video. As a teacher, if a kid writes an essay and they're using words in that essay that they can't pronounce, that's a hint. That isn't a giveaway. That's a hint that either they read that word somewhere and never learned how to pronounce it, which happens to all of us all the time. People who are readers, that's what happens to us all the time. The corollary though is that's also the kind of, <laughs> the gateway drug, it's the, it's the hint that if they can't pronounce it and they also can't explain it, or even worse, they can't explain the sentence that the word appears in in their essay, that's the dead giveaway that you need to ask more questions. So I have no problem with people mispronouncing words. Any good reader, that's what we do. But I did want to make sure that I stated that in front of God and everybody because several people wrote really lovely and impassioned pleas for understanding for people who do that. I'm with you. So I appreciate that. I appreciate those comments that you wrote. 
and also the stories that you shared. I learned a lot about teaching in America and elsewhere, and I've gotten some great, lovely letters from other teachers as well. All right, I think that's it. I wanted to let you know about Lady Susan. That's going to be coming. Patreon.com slash craftlit or craftlit.libson.com slash premium. That's where you can sign up for the app premium feed. Either one will get you Lady Susan. And then Emma's going to be coming end of March this year, 2024. And that's it. So thank you. Thank you. Until I get a chance to talk to you again, please be well. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.